United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community, and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning and welcome to United with Christ. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, today is uh, Thanksgiving and we have so much to be thankful for here in the United States, don't we? Uh, uh, today on United with Christ, we're going to continue our discussion of the Immigration Alliance that I've been talking to you about for the last two weeks. My name is Gus Haddad. I am a board member of the Immigration Alliance and uh, I welcome you this morning. Thank you for allowing us in your living rooms. And uh, we hope uh, that we've learned a little bit so far. And today I have a special guest with us. Um, and uh, our guest today is, is Bishop Winfield Mott. Win, as I call him, a good friend of mine for the last few years. And thank you for your ministry and thank you for being here, Win. Thank you. My and, pleasure. Uh, and uh, Win, would you open us in prayer this Thanksgiving morning? Sure. Thank you. O oh Lord, who has given us this good creation and all the gifts that uh, you have given us, we are thankful to you for your unmerited love towards us. And we ask that you might bless us, all the people of this earth, uh, with your love, and you might bring us together in praise uh, of you as we celebrate this Thanksgiving Day. We ask it in thanks for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Um, as you may recall, we've been discussing immigration. Uh, and it's very timely, as you know, last week uh, after the elections, uh, uh, President Obama mentioned that he is going to come out with an executive order uh, on immigration uh, by the end of the year, he says. And so it's going to be a very interesting time to see what happens. And we've been concentrating for the last two weeks about how immigration affects the Christian church and what are the opportunities within the church to welcome the stranger. Uh, we saw a couple videos on, on welcoming the stranger and how immigration affects us. I told you our family story of how we immigrated to the United States and, and how the United States has embraced our culture as well as our family. Today, uh, we'd like to concentrate for the next few minutes uh, with Bishop Mott on the theological underpinnings of immigration. As I mentioned in last week's segment, we've got, uh, we believe, somewhere around 12 million people who are undocumented in the United States. And what an opportunity it is for us as Christians, as the Christian church, to be a welcoming church and to be that, uh, uh, that uh, activating source, the, 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 the catalyst that allows people to feel comfortable rather than in a lawyer's office or in the uh, actual immigration offices. So Bishop Mott, if you would tell us a little bit about the underpinnings and, and what and what Jesus talks about uh, and his welcoming of strangers and, and so on. Yeah, it's because it's easy to get uh, wrapped up into the uh, politics of immigration. Yes, sir, it is. And as, as Christians, we're not immune to that. But we have to remember always that uh, we're citizens of uh, two places, uh, the, uh, the United States and also we're citizens of, of the kingdom of God and that those two citizenships are not the same. That uh, our citizenship in the kingdom of God uh, unites people from all over the world uh, that uh, have come together and uh, joined us in uh, the family of people that see God as their father. And that unites us into uh, a community that doesn't have the human boundaries that uh, political institutions have. So that we have to always be aware that uh, when we're looking at uh, people that uh, our brothers and sisters may be citizens of uh, any one of a great number of countries. And therefore, when they're here, 
uh, they certainly uh, should be welcomed as the brothers and sisters that they are when they are Christians. Yes. Besides that, uh, we really, uh, God has created all of us and loves all of us. And so we need to look on everybody uh, as uh, someone who needs to be loved as, as God loves them mm -hmm. and hope that they will do the same for us. Uh, so that uh, we have to separate that out from uh, the immigration policies of, of the nation and remember as Christians that, uh, that uh, we have our own uh, agenda, if you like, on this to, uh, to say to people, uh, you are a child of God. Uh, we hope you can be a citizen in the kingdom of God, uh, no matter what your citizenship status is in, uh, in this country. Well said. Uh, Bishop Mott, uh, you're also the chairman uh, or convener, I'm not sure which title you like best, of the Anglican Church in North America's Task Force on Immigration, the, right. uh, the Anglican Immigrant Task Force, we call it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's uh, been around for a year, year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. um, could you give us a little history on, on what, uh, what your thoughts were in putting together the task force within the Anglican Church mm -hmm. and, and how that's uh, coming together and what the goals are? Well, a number of evangelical churches actually yes. uh, have uh, looked at what the question of what the what is the gospel tell us to do on this, and have come together uh, to uh, uh, to study that and uh, and to act on on the results of that study. And the Anglican Church has has joined in that endeavor, mm -hmm. uh, in particular to try and uh, structure uh, legal clinics for people. Uh, who need both legal and un undocumented immigrants who need legal assistance as, as they certainly do in, in many ways. Uh, and uh, uh, the Anglican Church uh, really was uh, happy to become a part of that because uh, we see this as something that is beneficial not just to people who have uh, come here as the strangers among us, but uh, really people who can also uh, give us something as well uh, in sharing of, of their culture, uh, their heritage, uh, their faith uh, in our churches. So uh, the Anglican Church looked at this as serving a, a whole group of millions of people in need uh, and also a way of, of bringing the gospel to those who uh, have not experienced it as, as yet uh, among those millions of people. Well, that's an interesting point, isn't it, uh, Bishop? Uh, to discuss uh, uh, how the Great Commission can be fulfilled within uh, being able to help our, our brothers who uh, may be immigrants and yeah, may uh, be looking for status. We, we don't have to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. The uttermost parts of the earth have, are uh, here. Are, have come to see yes, us. Uh, they have. They have. Um, uh, what, would you say that it is a responsibility of a Christian or someone uh, uh, who calls themselves Christian, who belongs to a Christian church, to be involved in welcoming the stranger in, in this immigration deal. There's so much conversation, Bishop, of, and controversy over immigration that uh, when you come down on one side or another, you can say it's really a justice or a social justice issue. And, and really, we're not coming at it that way, are we? We're really coming mm -hmm. at it as a brotherly type uh, uh, mo uh, motive. Yeah, if you can say there are two sides to the immigration question, uh, I would have to say I don't think a Christian can really be on either of those sides yeah. very comfortably. We really have a different perspective. Uh, uh, Jesus said the most important commandments are to love God and love your neighbor. And he said, your neighbor is everybody. Uh, so I think whenever you see anyone, you have to see their face as being the face of Jesus and uh, ask, would you welcome Jesus uh, yeah. and, uh, and uh, treat them accordingly. So, um, so as we move uh, uh, toward fulfilling uh, 
uh, what we're uh, what we're discussing in terms of the uh, immigration alliance. Uh, what do you think the most important thing would be in terms of um, a discussion with someone who is undocumented, who's been here for a couple years, uh, and I mean more than two actually, uh, with their family, and that angst in terms of going to an attorney uh, and the attorney spending lots and lots of their life savings to try to get them someplace. How would, how would we as the church approach that person? Well, first of all, I think you have to approach them independently of their um, documented status. Yes. Uh, so you approach them the same way as you approach anyone else with uh, the love of Jesus. The, the most important thing for that person is is not to find citizenship, but to find Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's true uh, for citizens and green card holders and, and undocumented. It's true for but, all of us. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, we uh, are told that uh, we should uh, uh, render to Caesar that which is his, and therefore uh, that uh, uh, in uh, the context of the Roman Empire, they were told to uh, uh, respect the authorities, the, the civil authorities. Uh, so I think we have to work within that context to help the undocumented person as, as best we can uh, to do for them what is possible, uh, to always show them love, to always care about them. Uh, and if there are some ways to regularize their status to help them do it uh, as, as best we can. So the main motivation and the main approach is the love of Christ. The second and the underlying issue is their documentation status. And so as we would approach anybody in, in terms of asking them into our fold of believers, it is that uh, Christ within us is love and we would show that love to, to other people. So. Uh, so as we go about this, um, Bishop, within uh, the confines of the United States on this Thanksgiving Day, we have so much to be thankful for here in the United States uh, that welcoming of those immigrants and helping them uh, is, is really what Jesus is all about. Jesus hardly had uh, much of time to, to speak to anybody without feeding them lunch. Mm -hmm. He, he, used, he used food as that uh, bait, if you will. Uh, and, and, and many times he was really off wanting to pray by himself, but the, the, the crowds just followed him. And, uh, and so he said, give them lunch. And within that, uh, Jesus Christ really talks about all of us being equal. Jesus is our brother. He came to forgive our sins, and those sins include a myriad of, uh, for all of us, don't they? They do. And uh, certainly uh, the way we treat other people is a big part of that. Chief among them, yeah. I think. Yeah, and as you say, Jesus cared about the, the whole person. Right. Uh, not just the spiritual aspect, but uh, how that whole person uh, lives uh, his or her life. So, um, Bishop, I'm, I'm intrigued as, uh, as you've asked me to be involved more and more with the task force and now uh, asking me to serve uh, to represent the ACNA uh, on this. Uh, has there been any successes so far within the Anglican Church? Have there been any legal aid centers set up? Yeah, there have been. I think we're uh, at about seven right now, uh -huh. which is not an enormous amount uh, across the country, but it, it is a start. And, but for uh, just birthing, yeah, uh -huh. it's, uh, it's a good start. Exactly. Yeah. Tell us about these, uh, these centers as you know them. Well, these are, uh, center, uh, these are located in uh, a, a parish church that's willing to do this. Uh, the uh, um, Homeland Security uh, puts people through about a 40-hour program to uh, get them to develop skills uh, in order to give accurate advice to people uh, in terms of their immigration status. And these people who do not need to be attorneys, but they need to be knowledgeable about uh, immigration law, uh, can then uh, assist people uh, with uh, their status, uh, with clarifying it, with helping them uh, with whatever they need to, to do to apply for themselves or, or family or whoever, uh, and uh, uh, also help them with other problems uh, 
they may, as strangers here, be unfamiliar with a lot of American law. Here uh, at KSCE, uh, Bishop, uh, it's uh, a prime area uh, for, uh, uh, for these undocumented uh, 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 people. The KSE viewing area, I don't know whether you knew this or not, is southwest Texas and, and uh, uh, the southwestern part of New Mexico and, and northern Mexico. And, it in, and the viewing audience could be as much as two and a half million people mm -hmm. uh, in this area. So, so we happen to be the largest international plex, if you will, in the world. And so we're, we're prime uh, uh, we're a prime immigration uh, uh, clinic target, aren't we? That's for sure. And, and, and do you foresee uh, the southwestern part of the United States uh, and our, our area in particular, which overlaps uh, uh, with many other uh, uh, areas, such as the Catholic Church, uh, has many of these clinics. Uh, do you see us working together within that? I would hope so, that all Christians could work together uh, uh, on this. It, it really is uh, a, uh, something that uh, all Christians should care about. And uh, so, yeah, I would hope so. Obviously, the Southwest is, uh, uh, is a place uh, which needs this kind of help. But you know, it's interesting when I go around the country. I mean, uh, uh, you can go to North Carolina or uh, Indiana or uh, wherever you go, uh, and they're... Uh, a lot of immigrants now. Yes. Um, so some, by some estimates, I think, uh, I, I think the Immigration Alliance, which is uh, uh, put together, was put together by World Relief uh, Organization and under the auspices, but is now its, uh, its own 501c3 nonprofit uh, corporation. Um, I think that the estimates that they tell us are somewhere uh, between 12 and 40 million undocumented uh, people in the United States. But more, moreover than 12 to 40 million people, Bishop, there's 12 to 40 million people who may not want to come out of the shadows because of the, uh, uh, of the stain, if you will, of being undocumented. Uh, and, and so the church is that perfect vehicle where you can come and receive the love of Christ and be received in a community as well as seek help. Yeah, during uh, Ronald Reagan's uh, presidency, uh, there was immigration reform. The, the last time this happened, yes. 1986. Uh, and I helped a lot of people at that time then to be able to come forward. And uh, 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 he used the term amnesty, which yes. uh, a lot of people shy away from now, but uh, they came and applied for amnesty. And I was amazed in helping those people how they had managed to live, as you say, in the shadows all those years. Uh, and uh, I was a very uncomfortable life for them uh, and uh, a, a great relief for them to be able to come out and, and apply for this uh, um, path to uh, citizenship. Uh, the, the same is still true for people who are undocumented. It's, uh, it's a very hard, uh, uncertain kind of life. And I think it's important to remember that families are often a mixture yes. where uh, some people are citizens or legal residents, some are undocumented. So there's always the fear that uh, the family is going to be broken up. I gave the example, uh, I think uh, it was in, in last week's segment, I'm not sure, but uh, I have a friend uh, who, uh, who helps us with... Uh, uh, businesses we used to have uh, in the Juarez area. And his, bro his name is uh, Roberto, uh, and I think you've even met Roberto. And his brother, Miguel, uh, was denied, uh, and his papers were taken away from him, and he had, to, uh, he had to spend five years, and he still hasn't gotten his, his papers back. But I, uh, somebody called after last week's show, Bishop, and uh, uh, gave me their take on getting your papers back mm -hmm. once you've done uh, once you've had your take or, uh, your your papers revoked uh, or or taken away and they said uh, and I don't know if this is true or not and you might you might know this that when that happens you must go to the US immigration and tell them you're sorry 
and, uh, and I don't know if that's true or not, but I would imagine that many of these people have come to the United States as the same way my elders and your elders came, and they came seeking religious freedom, they came seeking, uh, uh, they ca came seeking political freedom, and they came seeking better opportunity there for their families. And I can't imagine that begging forgiveness is part of that. Uh, although we all need to be forgiven by Jesus, because every day I know uh, I at least uh, uh, could be considered needing to be on my knees. 24 hours a day. <laughs> uh, yeah, asking forgiveness of the meager is, is a little different uh, take on this. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't uh, it? What's often true is in regularizing status, uh, according to immigration law, you're expected to go to the country of origin. So, for instance, if you're Mexican, then you, you have, it, it's obviously easier than if you're from India, but uh, uh, you have to return to your uh, home country, uh, to the American consulate there. Uh, and that can present a whole host of, of difficulties as well. And so the, the major group uh, that we're talking about is Hispanic from Mexico and Nicaragua and Latin America. Mm -hmm. But we're also talking about uh, other groups, aren't we? We're talking about Europeans and Asians and Africans and, and people from all over the world coming to the United States and seeing us as the breadbasket and the great uh, and the great nation that we are. Uh, so Jesus would not turn these people down uh, in helping them. And helping our brother is kind of a task, isn't it? That Jesus said, you are your brother's keeper, mm -hmm. didn't he? He who uh, says he loves God but, uh, does, but hates his brother is a liar is the way uh, uh, the New Testament puts it. So we, we need to examine our hearts in that, don't we? Uh, as we get involved in, in these kind of things. Um, I know, for instance, that uh, uh, up in Chicago, our first Anglican church uh, clinic, if you will, or, or, or site, mm -hmm. uh, is coming together nicely. And, and uh, the young lady up there has gotten her immigration certification. I think it's called certification, certification. yeah. Uh, from the Bureau of Immigration, and, and, uh, and they're working on it, and working on a few others. I had a pastor um, call after the first show and ask if he could be involved with us, and I'm hoping that we can meet him this week mm -hmm. uh, so that we can have him involved. And So this is open. Can, can this be, be open to all denominations, or do they have to be members uh, of a specific denomination? No, any church can... Uh uh, can uh, uh, do this clinic and, and go through the uh, certification process with, the, uh, with Homeland Security. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, and I, I think uh, I can speak uh, for everyone to say we'd be happy to help anybody from any denominational background. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's our opportunity. If, if you're a pastor or a lay leader, in uh, a local congregation uh, within this viewing area and you're interested in, in helping uh, within this, uh, this immigration reform that's coming uh, and, and maybe not even the reform that's coming but uh, just helping those that are already here. Uh, please uh, give us a call. Uh, I know you can call me here at the station and they'll get me uh, your contact information so we can discuss how we could uh, uh, move you along in this area and see if you're interested in in helping us. And, and if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, um, I, I don't know if we've put it on the screen yet or not, but uh, for further information, if you're interested in the Immigration Alliance, you could look at uh, the immigrationalliance.org. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in the Anglican Church Initiative, you can look at the greenhousemovement.com, I believe. I believe so. And, uh, or you can look at the anglicanchurch.net. Uh, which is the church's uh, website. Uh, and once again, you could call me here at the station and, uh, and I'll be happy to, uh, to get with you and, and, and discuss uh, uh, this upcoming uh, opportunity that we have to, to serve our brother, to welcome the stranger, and to show the love of Christ uh, that we are all called to, uh, to do. I think it's also important to mention that uh, churches really can be enriched by uh, people 
uh, who are coming to us from uh, cultures we're not maybe as familiar with uh, from other countries. Are, are uh, that this is a two-way street. To look around us and, and, and see uh, that we might learn something from somebody else? <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> this is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I agree with you as I, as I, I travel myself and, and uh, worship in, in different, uh, uh, in different uh, churches. And you look around and you see the different makeup mm -hmm. of those people and, and that rich uh, heritage that they could bring to us that we could learn, uh, especially, uh, especially from those people. So, Bishop, uh, uh, tell me uh, in the last uh, minute, a minute and a half that we have, uh, how you would sum this up uh, in, uh, in, in, that, uh, in, that, uh, in that time. What it is theologically, uh, Christian-wise, and, uh, and practically, uh, if you would. Politically, who knows? <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, been a, a long-term uh, problem. Uh, theologically, it's very clear. Uh, it's, it's about the love of God uh, to all people that we can be vehicles of uh, in our life. Uh, Bishop, I sure thank you for being our, our, uh, our guest today. Uh, I, I, I thank our audience for allowing us to, uh, to be in your, uh, in your living room today on this Thanksgiving. I smell wonderful baked goods and, and turkeys being baked all over this, uh, this uh, city and this region, and I wish you uh, could be with us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, uh, or you may still be at the parade today. Uh, if you are at the parade, go by St. Clement's because we're giving out donuts and hot chocolate this morning. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting uh, Thanksgiving. And, and once again, I want to thank you uh, for joining us, Bishop. Thank you for coming down specially to, uh, to do this show with us. Uh, uh, we here at uh, United with Christ, uh, sponsored by KSCE on this station. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you again. United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSCE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.